Major changes could be coming soon to Monday Night Raw once the merger between WWE and UFC under the Endeavor umbrella is completed. We'll have details on that. Plus, what is Brock Lesnar's status for this weekend's Money in the Bank Premium Live event? Will the Beast be there? We've got some details on that. Plus, an update on the creative issues currently in WWE with Vince McMahon's fingerprints being all over Raw and SmackDown and making several changes just hours before the show goes live on the air. A recent Bray Wyatt's photo has been debunked after it sparked feelings that he could be near an in-ring returned. The Creed brothers, what does their future in WWE look like? Are they staying in NXT or are they heading to the main roster? Plus, could Dominic Mysterio be working with his godfather Conan on WWE TV in the near future? Hey guys, welcome back to Rest News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well. As always, there are plenty of news stories to get into in the world of world wrestling entertainment. And before we even get into today's news stories, a reminder, we will be live tonight for a watch along for Friday Night Smackdown live here in the UK in prime time on Fox. So I believe that's 8 p.m. here in the UK, whereas over there in the United States on the East Coast, it's going to be 3 p.m. So we're going to be live just before the show goes on the air. So be sure to join us tonight. We'll be live for a watch along and a post show considering we're at UK time and then of course tomorrow for Money in the Bank we'll be doing the same and we'll be doing a watch along for the entirety of the premium live event plus the post show as well so be sure to join us there but let's get into the news stories today in the world of world wrestling entertainment starting talking about major changes coming to Monday Night Raw very, very soon once the merger between WWE and UFC is complete. Major changes could reportedly be implemented on WWE Monday Night Raw in the near future, providing a major deal can be completed. According to Dave Meltzer in this week's Wrestling Observer Newsletter, unspecified changes are being discussed for the red brand. However, when these changes are implemented all depends on the timing of the company's impending merger with UFC and completed acquisition from the Endeavor Group. Creep. Meltzer writes, quote, We were told the merger not being finalized is holding up major changes happening, but there is talk of at least exploring major changes for Raw with new ideas when the merger takes place. Of course, right now, it's currently unclear when exactly Endeavor's acquisition of WWE and subsequent merger with the UFC will take place, although the companies are said to be aiming for it to be completed in late 2023, so later on this year. They did say in the second half of this year, we're just about to enter the second half of this year, so I don't know if it's a case of any time now, but certainly there is at least talk of exploring some big changes for Raw when this merger is complete. Now, as for what these changes could be, there's no real indication past WWE CEO Nick Khan has publicly spoken about the idea of making the third hour of Raw a bit more adult slash risky being something that's being considered whether these changes will affect WWE's creative remains to be seen however a recent report has suggested that the creative influence of Vince McMahon may increase following the merger's completion some in WWE have been reportedly attempting to make measures to prevent McMahon from forcing his creative will on the shows, attempting to, quote, Vince-proof WWE's TV programming ahead of time. Now, we are going to talk about some kind of leaked comments regarding the creative situation right now in WWE with Vince McMahon, but let me know your thoughts on this in the comment section below. What kind of changes do you think could be coming to Raw under the Endeavor umbrella? Is it a case of the third hour becoming more adult, more risky? Is it a case of Raw going back to just being a two-hour show? Does this also depend on what television rights agreement could be negotiated by Endeavor for Monday Night Raw moving forward? What happens if it moves off USA Network? What changes would you like to see being made in the future? Let me know your thoughts, as always, in the comment section below. I'm really interested to see your ideas, wants, and wills for the red brand moving forward. Now, Brock Lesnar, the big question is, is he going to be in the UK? Are we going to see the Beast take the trip across the pond and be in London this weekend for Money in the Bank? Well, a new report has seemingly revealed the status of Brock Lesnar for WWE Money in the Bank 2023 in London, England. At WWE Money in the Bank, Cody Rhodes will face Dominic Mysterio with Rhea Ripley in his corner. Over the past few weeks, Mysterio has certainly gotten under Cody Rhodes' skin, but Rhodes also has a looming threat that he still has to deal with. At WWE Night of Champions, Rhodes lost to Brock Lesnar when he passed out from the Kimura Lock. Following the event, Cody challenged Lesnar to a rematch that has still not been accepted. 
Per WRKD Wrestling, Brock Lesnar is expected to appear at Money in the Bank to set up a third gimmick match against Cody Rhodes this summer at SummerSlam. It was previously reported that WWE has been planning for their third contest between Rhodes and Lesnar to happen at the August 5th Premium Live event. Besides their last bout at Night of Champions, Rhodes defeated Lesnar in their first meeting at Backlash in Puerto Rico earlier this year. Of course, if we get any more details as we get much more closer in the coming hours and over the next 24 hours prior to the event about Brock Lesnar, of course, we'll let you know. The question is, does this mean Dominic Mysterio could defeat Cody Rhodes at Money in the the bank and what do you think the third gimmick match at SummerSlam could be? There had been rumors, of course, that it could be a bull rope match, a match that certainly Cody Rhodes' father, the American Dream Dusty Rhodes, had made famous throughout his career and lifetime. Let's go back to the creative situation in WWE right now. We spoke about Vince McMahon. We spoke about this earlier this week. It's becoming a bit of a repetitive story. I understand that. But certainly, the big story is about Vince McMahon's growing creative influence since he returned to the company earlier this year. And reportedly, an insider has leaked details of the mindset of Vince McMahon and how it has led to issues currently for WWE creative. Recently, more reports have emerged of McMahon's creative tinkering, including news that his creative control is likely to become come greater under the Endeavor deal once it's completed later this year. With McMahon making late changes to recent shows, there have also been reports that there are behind the scenes elements trying to Vince proof some shows. Speaking on the subject of Vince McMahon's creative influence, Dave Meltzer has provided insights in the Wrestling Observer newsletter, referring to a source, quote, close to the situation. Meltzer writes, quote, it's noted that Vince believes he understands the business and is doing what he thinks is the best thing, as he always thinks things. As one person close to the situation noted, he believes in what he says. Is he wrong all the time? No, he's actually not. He's actually got better input than most would believe. Is it all good? No, he's stuck on certain mindsets that are long gone and it could be damaging. It's not the interference itself that is the problem, it's how and when he does it. It was noted that if he delivered all this input on Thursday night for SmackDown or even Friday morning or Sunday night for Raw or even Monday morning, it would be different. Making all these changes three or four hours before the show goes on the air live throws everything into chaos that it has been as of late. Of course, a number of changes were made to the June 19 episode of Raw that led to backstage frustration. It was also reported that major changes were made to the script for the June 29 episode of SmackDown, which saw previously advertised content abandoned. Now, Angelo Dawkins of the Street Profits has recently discussed working with Vince McMahon and describing the experience as, quote, awesome. Ricochet also recently confirmed that Vince McMahon certainly has an influence on current WWE creative. So the question then becomes, once this merger between WWE and UFC is complete under the Endeavor umbrella, are we going to see Vince McMahon really return to creative power like he was prior to his retirement this time last year? Certainly going to be interesting moving forward. Let's talk a little bit about Bray Wyatt because Bray Wyatt's a name that still people are talking about and wondering what's next for the former Universal Champion. Now, a recent image has emerged of Bray Wyatt raising hopes of an imminent return among WWE fans online, but it's not all as it seems. In the run-up to WrestleMania 39 in March of this year, news emerged that Bray Wyatt was dealing with an illness that would keep him off television and prompt the abandonment of a match at the April event with Bobby Lashley. While there has been hope of a return for the popular star, he has been absent from WWE television and wasn't assigned to either Raw or SmackDown during the WWE draft. On June 29, a new photo was shared on Twitter of Wyatt looking very well in a US eatery and the image got a lot of WWE fans talking on social media. Obviously you can see the image on the screen right now. Now at the time of recording the image has been viewed I think over a hundred thousand times on Twitter. It's received over 1700 likes, probably even more when you watch this. When asked whether the image was recent the reply from the person who posted it simply read yes. Now, fan speculation flowed through the replies with a fan noting, hmm, Bray's beard is about the same length to how it was when he first portrayed The Fiend a few years back. I wonder if that might be a clue. Others would comment that Wyatt, Wyatt appears to be in good physical condition. Another follower would say that the photo was taken at the Coney Island restaurant in Brooksville, Florida. 
Now, a bit, and not that much, it must be said, of internet research has revealed that the exact same photo was previously posted by the Lucha Libre online Facebook page three years ago, over three years ago, back in May 2020, with the translated caption, quote, Bray Wyatt taking advantage of the free time to share with his daughter what for many has been a difficult time, for most fighters has been a blessing, as they were generally over 300 days on the road. So... If you see this image floating around, if you're getting carried away or anything like that, it is not a new photo or a recent one of anything of the sort. So it's not a recent photo. It doesn't mean Bray Wyatt isn't close to returning or anything like that. It's just a case of if you're basing your hopes off this photo, the problem is it's over three years old. Now, when it comes to Bray Wyatt, though, WW2K revealed yesterday that along with Bray Wyatt as part of the next DLC pack for WW2K23, the previously unannounced Uncle Howdy will be included too. So if you play that game, you can get your fix of Bray Wyatt there, but not in the ring as of right now. But again, anything's possible moving forward. Let's talk about NXT and the Creed brothers. Brutus and Julius Creed are set to face the Dyad on July 4th's episode of NXT with the stipulation the loser will be leaving NXT. With the July 4th episode being pre-taped, the outcome of the match has been previously reported. Now, obviously, if you don't want to be spoiled, you should probably skip ahead now. So I'll give you a few seconds, but <laughs> might be a little bit obvious. Five, four, three, two, one. Now, Dave Meltzer has addressed the probable main roster call-up of the Creed Brothers who lost the loser leaves NXT match in the current issue of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. According to Dave Meltzer, the near future of the Creed Brothers is being kept quiet as he writes, quote, that would be the impression everyone would have them being called up, although internally they are keeping it quiet for the next week or so and some people directly involved have been told it's all an angle, but that also could be being told to keep it from getting out. But I was told it would be clear in about 10 days or two weeks what the real story is. It had previously been speculated that the losers, uh, the loser leaves NXT match was a, a way to write out the dyad of NXT television, of course, with Jagger Reed and Rip Fowler having both requested their releases from WWE, but evidently that was not the, 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 the case. Shawn Michaels has addressed the release request, which wasn't granted, saying he has no hard feelings and wants the pair to have a prominent role in NXT until they leave. Of course, the Creed brothers are former NXT tag team champions, having held the title from June 4th to September 4th in 2022. They all also won the 2022 Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic Tournament. Meltzer said on Wrestling Observer Radio earlier this week that WWE is, quote, very, very high on Julius Creed in particular. So the question becomes, what are they going to be doing moving forward in WWE? And maybe a main roster call-up is very much on the horizon. Finally, Dominic Mysterio is going to be facing Cody Rhodes in one of the biggest matches of his career this coming weekend at Money in the Bank. But could he be getting a bit of family support in the future on WWE TV? With the new era of the LWO in full swing on WWE television and Conan having previously opened up about a conversation with Triple H, Conan has recently discussed his hopes for a new run in WWE. Dave Meltzer addressed the subject of Conan in WWE in the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, writing, quote, Conan was on Inside the Ropes radio and talked about having discussions to come here and how his goal is to work with Dominic Mysterio, who in real life is his godson. He said it hadn't gotten past the discussion phase and said it was one of the two goals he has left. The other is to promote a major Lucha Libre show in the United States. Conan would also discuss the ideas he's had for joining the Latino World Order, with whom he has a history, saying, quote, oh, well, definitely, I think right Right now, the storyline would be, you know, I have many ideas for this just to join the LWO because a lot of people don't know this because a lot of people don't follow Lucha. Fantasma, Santos Escobar, actually El Hio del Fantasma, was a guy that I've known him since he was a little kid. And I remember his dad used to tell him because he used to follow me a lot. His dad would tell him, if you eat all your spinach, you'll get big like Conan, you know, so that's how long I've known him. Conan would discuss Phantasma's time in Arena Mexico, saying he was wallowing in mediocrity until his father asked Conan for help. And help is what Conan had, uh, bringing the young star to AAA and letting him show his full potential, including on the microphone. Conan does admit that Phantasma was absolutely terrible at cutting a promo in those days, though, but would eventually become the number one heel. Reflecting on the history of the LWO, Conan also noted that he was supposed to be the first leader of the group, although joining the NWO Wolfpack put an end to that plan. So I guess you never know. It's nothing past a discussion phase, but anything is possible in the future, particularly when it comes to world wrestling entertainment. But there you go, guys. This is the latest WWE news for you. Be sure to smash a like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe bottom right-hand corner. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, and I'll speak for you again very, very soon. 
Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.